Hello. I'm presenting, addressing the acutely presenting parasophageal hernia. My name is Dmitry Olenikov, and I'm chair of surgery at Monmouth Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health. My disclosure is I have received research funding from LifeCell Corporation having to do with parasophageal mesh in hyal hernia repair. I will not mention that in this presentation. When we think about the presentation of the acute gastric volvulus, what we think about is somebody who presents to the emergency room with some distress, typically dry retching, nausea, and potentially even sepsis. The first thing we must do is determine whether this is an, a, a patient in extremis and therefore needs to go to the emergency uh, surgical area as shown here, or that this patient has time, in which case I routinely place a nasogastric tube. If the tube goes in without any difficulty, oftentimes I ask for a quick upper GI to see if I see duodenum. Contrast in the duodenum typically means that you have successfully detorsed the stomach and you can proceed on to elective surgical repair and or endoscopic gastropexy as shown in this in this box. On the other hand, if you are unable to get the NG tube down for whatever reason, then your options are consider endoscopic reduction. And that's what we do routinely. Um, the patient is prepped uh, for the endoscopy suite. General anesthesia um, is available, although we've been able to do this under uh, conscious sedation without much difficulty. And I typically use a, um, a large um, upper scope or potentially a, um, a pediatric colonoscope in order to help me uh, with this reduction. The extra length helps obviously in a non-successful reduction, or if there is evidence of uh, stomach ischemia, then the next step, of course, is uh, proceed to the operating room, as shown here. So gastric volvulus comprises of rotation of the stomach and also the lo longitudinal organoaxial or transverse mesoaxial um, volvulus. Acute presentation of um, the gastric volvulus is a rare condition, in my opinion, leading to obstruction, incarceration, strangulations, or ischemic necrosis, if not adequately uh, taken care of. Ischemic necrosis is the most feared complication, of course, occurring in 11% of patients with gastric volvulus and has a high mortality rate of up to 30 to 50%. The treatment of acute gastric volvulus in our hands is endoscopic or surgical, um, and we will discuss those. Controversy exists regarding the role of endoscopic treatments as a temporary stabilizing treatment or as a standalone primary treatment. And endoscopic management includes endoscopic detorsion and percutaneous endoscopic placement. Here's a typical picture, as you can see, uh, of a torsed stomach um, with a completely intragastric stomach, yet there is um, some amount of um, filling of the duodenum, which is typically reassuring. If, if you're then able to proceed to endoscopy, these are your typical findings. You have to retroflex the, the scope completely in order to see the GE junction, and then and only at that time can you see um, uh, the bulb. And you can see here um, pre-endoscopy, endoscopic uh, decompression. Um, you can see it right here. And then once you enter the bulb and rotate, then you can then um, withdraw the scope backwards with a small um, dial turned all the way in, and this will straighten the stomach out, and it will look this way when you're completely done. You can then place a peg, or you can leave the patient for elective parasophageal hernia repair on the same hospitalization. Here's a video of a detorsion that I borrowed from a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Kenneth Chi at Lutheran General. I think it's a lovely video. I think Dr. Chi does a wonderful job. You can see the stomach is entered, complete uh, retroflexion view, and antrum duodenum is almost always right next to your stomach. You have to use the entire scope, pave it out, use some suction, and finally intubate right here, which is the duodenum, 
as noted here. Once you intubate the duodenum, you slightly increase the scope pressure as required, carefully advance the gastroscope or a pediatric colonoscope as mentioned earlier into the duodenum, and then now you are um, into the uh, second portion of the duodenum as shown here. Once that occurs, you then wanna straighten your, your stomach and that requires advancing the scope to the deep duodenum as possible. That will actually, believe it or not, help um, straighten the stomach out just from the A loop. Lock the small dial forward, right torque, withdraw the scope to pull down and straighten on the stomach as described earlier uh, by me. Once you're able to do that, you'll be able to see in a retroflexion view is a more straight stomach as shown in this picture right here. That's what you wanna see. And there's the periosophageal opening right over here. So this has been a successful detorsion. Here's some nice, uh, nice pictures of this. And then at this point, you can then proceed out of the tupeg, as I mentioned earlier, or proceed to a um, uh, definitive surgical repair. So my group and I have done some work on this issue. And I'm going to show you a couple of the scientific uh, works we've done. This is what we presented at, at the um, poster presentation at Sages. Uh, it was the it's titled "The Feasibility of an Alternative Approach to Acute Gastric Volvulus." We did a single institution retrospective review, 22 patients. Successful endoscopic detorsion was actually uh, achieved in all patients, with 54.5% underwent subsequent lap periosophageal hernia repair. Mean time uh, to surgery was about 28 days. Some had to wait longer because of other comorbidities. 45% of the patients with comorbidities prohibitive to surgical intervention uh, wound up getting a G-tube. Um, uh, no known recurrence of, of acute gastric volvulus so far. Um, and our conclusion um, from this uh, uh, small set of uh, data is endoscopic detorsion allows patients to be medically optimized uh, prior to definitive surgical repair and to avoid the morbidity and mortality of an emergent operation. In patients with prohibitive medical comorbidities, a surgical intervention may even be completely avoided um, as long as you can place a, a gastrostomy tube. This is a study that we recently published in Surgical Endoscopy in 2020. We looked at the minimally invasive approach to hiatal hernia repair superior to open, even in an emergency setting, a large national database. And what I want to uh, call from this study is that oftentimes, if you're able to uh, delay the patient in order to accomplish a laparoscopic uh, periosophageal hernia repair or even robotic, um, the, the benefit is tremendous. Um, and the conclusions were, despite the urgent setting for mild, moderate um, illness patients, open repair was, was inferior in uh, all aspects, length of stay, cost, et cetera. And even in severely ill patients, despite being more, more utilized, open was not superior to laparoscopic. In fact, complications, cost, and mortality trends all favored uh, laparoscopic approach. And so in the middle of the night, if you can decompress the patient and bring him back the following day or in the same hospitalization uh, or maximize the patient, I think you give the patient a much better outcome. Finally, this is a, an older study, but I still think it's an important one. Um, it was a single institution uh, retrospective re review study. We had 20 patients, 17 lap repair, three open. Mean operating time to lap uh, was about 190 minutes. Blood loss was, uh, was minimal. Length of stay was about 8.2 days. No significant uh, perioperative complications. All patients were tolerating a regular diet on, on short-term follow-up. So laparoscopic repair of acute perisophageal hernia is safe and feasible with low morbidity and mortality as mentioned earlier by me. So in conclusion, we advocate using endoscopic techniques to reduce the periosophageal hernia and then to proceed to a definitive surgical repair. With that, I wanna thank you and we'll be taking questions shortly.